Say, hey, what's going down? You're on the recovery pod. Hey, what's going down? You're on the recovery pod. Hey. I was asking uh, one of the people in the hospital what we should talk about. She was just like, I think you should talk about um, the holidays coming up and how people with substance use issues are going to handle it and with COVID being isolated. Oh, let me run that by her, see, because usually when we plan shit, it just goes like way left. So is she saying like during the holidays that it specifically is different with substance abuse and then plus on top of that COVID? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, I mean, like how people are going to be isolated. They're not really supposed to go see family. It's going to be different this oh, year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <sighs> um, yeah, dude. Like, I mean, I can't think of a whole lot. Well, I mean, I mean I'm sure I think of some of it, but I can. Okay. So here's what I can say I kind of had um, something that really needed to happen to me. And it made me feel like garbage, but I needed that realization. So this, um, the whole having to isolate thing, it is a very, very scary thing. And when you first think about it, like people are like, there are some people that are like, you know, I'm not scared of the virus. I'm not get- scared of getting sick. I- I'll be fine. Like, You know, so one thing it's getting sick, you know, that that's probably not going to feel great, but that's not the scariest part of this whole thing to me. So what is the scariest part? The scariest part is not being able is having to be away from everybody. So when I thought my roommate had COVID and I thought that there's a chance that I would have COVID, I went into this like part of my like so deep in my head where it's like I automatically just assume that I have it and that I have to stay away from everybody I have to isolate I cannot go to class I cannot go see my boyfriend I cannot see my friends probably you know just and for some reason I thought I would have it like for a really long ass time so I couldn't see like my family like during holidays, even though it was like a month away, but, um, <laughs> like got it in the middle of October. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Next year. Yeah. Um, so, and I had this, like, I don't know if this was an awakening, but I could feel it in every single part of my body. Like I was just sitting there, like just really zoning into it. And it was just, it just hit me. Like I like, we are so not in control of this thing. Like we like this thing could just really, it it does not, um, what is the fucking word? Um, Oh my God. Why can't I think of it? Whatever. Discriminate. Yes, thank you. (laughs) It does not discriminate. So anybody could just, everybody has to like isolate it. If you don't want to be an asshole. I I would not want to like deal with the feeling of, you know, giving it to somebody. I just had a family member die because his wife um, got it, got the symptoms, didn't say anything. And he died because he he had like bad lung issues. I don't want to deal with that feeling of being that asshole. and. I just, and it's just like that feeling of being stuck and it just, just for a moment, I like felt that feeling like, okay, I have to be completely away from everybody and I am so not in control of my life. Like, (laughs) and, um, well, I mean, I I am like, it's like a, so many sides to it. Cause it's like, you don't want to feel isolated, but you also don't want to go out there and be reckless and risk exposure that you then give to someone else but you don't want to be alone but you can't really you don't know you don't know who has it you don't know where it's at you kind of just find out the hard way like oh everybody seemed fine but somebody at the christmas party had covid now everybody's got it now everybody who's been in contact with them since has got it you know 
So it's like, do you be, do you be smart and kind of fall back? And then everybody ends up being fine. And you're like, well, this is stupid. Or, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many levels to it and it's hard. I bet the overthinking alone and the paranoia and worrying about everything just like amplifies it. So add on to it holidays, special occasions. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And that, that feeling, even though nothing really happened, you know, that feeling put me in check. I didn't have to go through the thing itself to check myself. It was like, okay, I, I actually have to be careful now because before I wasn't, you know, like if I don't have to wear my mask, I won't, you know, I don't think about sanitizing my hands like every five seconds. I don't, you know what I mean? Because now it's like, damn, I, I don't know if it's because of my fear of being alone, but just like now I'm like, I, I don't want to get this thing so that I have to be away from people because right. I will die. I will die of loneliness before I, this thing kills me. Like, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> well, maybe the universe just knows that about you and it's like, priming you to address that and yeah that did that you know and later on that day after it hit me I was just like sitting there like just like feeling that feeling of loneliness even though I wasn't really I could go see like people but I just I I told myself you know like don't make plans with anybody right now you know don't so I just kept myself in my room and like I'm like what is and I started backtracking this feeling that I had because it was just like this really scary loneliness and I feel like I got in touch with my inner child because I I really it was like all of my childhood memories were hitting me at once as if I was there right there in that moment and it was a really crazy feeling but I that was my way to get to her and to repair her and to heal her because I'm not going to get to her when I'm feeling all, you know, super vibey and spiritual and meditating and just at peace. Like, no, that's not, that's, that's just me like being present and at peace. (laughs) I don't know, but. Right. That's just being on another form of autopilot. Like usually we're on some form of autopilot and we notice it more when we're discontent because now there's something to focus on, you know, when it's all good, it's easy to say, oh, like life's great. Yeah. Yeah. These tools work great because I don't really have to. Use right. Them. Yeah. But then when we have to use them and we realize, you know, how hard it can be to use them or how hard it is sometimes to re- even remember to use them, you know, that's when we actually start feeling things and we're like, oh, maybe I'm not doing as good as I thought. You know, it's when I go a long stretch without any problems. I feel like, wow, I handle problems really good. I just stay on top of it all the time. But Mm -hmm. like, I actually have a problem and and it throws me through a loop. And it's like, man, it's been so long since I've had a problem that I'm not so used to dealing with them as well as I thought I was. Um, But I think, too, a lot of this, just this whole thing, like not even just COVID stuff, but like COVID really adds to it, is the overthinking. Every you're, You're everywhere but right now. Um, the acceptance of, you know, the, la- the lack of control, the, uh, you know, the things we, all the rule, all the new rules we have to follow and this and that, like it sucks. It's a change. It's different. It's not everybody agrees with it. So we're getting all that again. Like we've always kind of had those rules that not everybody wants to follow, but this is different. This is like major, like life changing rules. And the paranoia is even crazier like we can always think oh like what if you know something happens to my loved one in a car accident because they happen but this is like what if something happens to my loved one for (laughs) walking in a store you know what i mean like but if you allow yourself to get out of the moment and and feed into these like negative thoughts and paranoia not to say that some aren't valid to at least consider but if you get lost in them, that's where all the problems lie, you know, like getting too far ahead of ourselves and shit. Yeah, it makes sense why, you know, suicide rates have gone up 
overdose rates have gone up. People that you would have never thought that would be addicts are fucking day drinking, becoming alcoholics now. And like we've said in the previous one, it's just like lack of acceptance. Um, we're just the the old wounds that we've tried to repress by feeling like we're in control are coming out into the light now. Right. And this is a good thing, I think. Like for, you know, spiritual awakening, for people healing. I think we're entering this new era. And I'm so glad that these two random people in Big Rapids I saw at the <laughs> park thought that this pandemic is helping people spiritually grow. And I'm like, hell yes. <laughs> yeah, because um, a lot of times when people are like stuck in their ways and they're unconscious or they're just kind of burying their heads in the sand, they don't get there to a place of looking for solutions and answers or kind of having to adapt if they're comfortable. So same with like substance use, same with like a lot of behaviors. When, when, when it's not super horrible, you could sit there for a very long time. I mean, I sat there for years, decade, you know, where I'm just, it's not bad enough to be like, all right, dude, you need to like really gear up and make a change, but it's not cool either. So yeah, kind of the same thing. Like it, I feel for the unconscious in times like this because they're the ones who may not know like that there are answers out there or they may be so close minded to even like be open yep. to seeing them if they came across it. But this also can inspire that change, like push them to a place where they're like at a breaking point where they're like, I got to fucking do something like and then maybe they're a little bit more open minded to something different. You know. I, I feel like this thing, I, I honestly just, I, I feel like it's going to keep going until every single person gets their head out of their ass. Like, you got people rising up, these like, you know, Republicans or Constitution enthusiasts that are like, you can't take my freedom, you know, it's my freedom to whether I get sick or not, you know, and that's that fear. It's fear driven. It's like, things are not the, my way. Things are not the way I want them to be. I, I feel like I'm, I'm losing control. It's like fear of losing control over your life. So you, you think you're so like mighty and powerful when you just, you know, say like, this is my freedom. Like, no, that's just you being afraid of right. what is actually, you know, going on. And, um, like, I, I don't know. And I have, I also have hope that all these people are also going to check themselves the way I did. You know, I didn't have it as bad. I was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Like I was cool with either way, but like, it's going to happen to everybody. And like my, um, my family member who is, um, who would always just be screaming in my ear telling me <laughs> how this freedom is being taken away. Um, hearing about my other family member that might have put him somewhere that might have made him think you know right. here's so, my thing it's kind of a little off topic from what we were doing but it's on the topic of my whole freedom shit yeah like i've had this argument with people before and i should have known better because when i'm arguing with an ego like that they're not open to any other viewpoint but like you live in a society so we live in society, a society <laughs> a society societies have rules they have other people in them so yeah. like if you want to fucking be in the land of the free go fucking live in the woods where nobody's around you don't have freshly paved roads you don't have lights you don't have policemen there to save you or an ambulance there to pick you up if you need it like go live on the land have your gun have your drugs have your fucking mask free freedom like but if you live in a society, you have to abide by some rules for the sake of the whole. Like, yep. I just don't get this argument that people have where they're like, oh, it's this is, uh, you know, against our rights. Like, what are our rights? 
to just fucking run wild in anarchy. Like, you know what I mean? Like you want the freedom to do as you please, but you're going to want protection from that person who's coming at you with a gun, who's on meth, who's stealing your shit. So where's your <laughs> I'm free freedom right now? I mean, I'm just saying, like, I just don't get it. Like, be consistent. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I was talking to someone not long ago who's he's like, I don't need a license. I can drive. This is a God-given America. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, you God. don't think you need a license to drive. Like, you live in a place where that's the rule. You need a license. You need to be qualified to drive and registered. Nah. Like, I'm, I'm a free man. <laughs> like, but you're damn sure going to drive down that road that was paved for you. You're going to walk into that store that's lit for you. You're, you're benefiting from the benefits of being in a society. You need to follow some rules there, bro. Like, oh, I really like this topic of freedom now because it really got me thinking. So we think that our freedom lies outside of us. Here, here's what this like, you know, that moment that I had that I was talking about where I was tripping out. I had like the thought of the whole control thing and freedom. So it's like if before I thought things outside of me, I was in control of. <coughs> we think that our freedom is outside of us. We just have to flip that the other way. We don't have freedom outside of us, but we have freedom inside of us. So we have the freedom, we have the control of how we make our lives with what we have. We are given things from the outside in. We're not trying to do like inside out. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people are saying that they want their freedom, like, you know, um, their freedom to do whatever outside of themselves. Right. That is that that is has to do with other people. But the thing is, is that whatever is happening, you have to make freedom of what you have with yourself, if that makes sense. Like kind of just making the best of what you are given by the universe, what you're given by the circumstance. Right. Yeah. These people who want all these freedoms out here, you know, <laughs> they. They don't hey, you got any freedom. more of them freedoms <laughs> can i have some freedoms where do i get those Whoa, oh my god you got those kind of freedoms i want those kind where'd you get those i just got these at the walmart um, for 3.99 no nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the people who want these freedoms though like they they don't even have freedom from themselves like, yes they they want the freedoms outside because they feel like that's all they know how to control they yes. don't have freedom from their own thoughts. They don't have freedom from their conditioning, the way they were brought up and, and told to believe. They don't have freedom from these fucking UFO sighting websites that tell them the new conspiracy theory. Because Oh my god, something... are you calling me out right now? <laughs> no, uh, no, there's there's more of you. And and I, I think I snatched you out pretty quick, but you you just dove right in for a minute. Um <laughs> that's just my go to though. I'm just like fucking people in their ufo fucking sightings dude <laughs> no, i literally these people, <laughs> these people like fucking they they have zero control they read the new the new thing the anti-mask they get on the facebook group where they can all rally up together and get in a huge collective ego energy where they all fucking gas each other and they say yes <laughs> we are so right they have no freedom to think their own damn thought you know what i mean so of course, they're going to put their freedoms outside because they don't even know there's an inside. They are so unconscious and on autopilot that they are just going. Now, if you stand for something, cool. If you are a free thinker and you just agree with some of these, like, freedom fights, cool. You know what I mean? But, like, I feel like there's a lot more going on than they want to say is going on or that they even know is going on. That's kind of my point. But. yeah it's just um like i said people are mostly fear driven 
And yeah, so I kind of had, I remember I was just thinking like, why was I, why do I feel like I felt better last year? Well, because my entire day was planned out exactly how I wanted it to be. And I was around people like constantly. So like I get up, I go to class and I bum around in the student lounge where there's like a bunch of people in there that I can just like bullshit with, make fun of classes, make fun of professors and homework and other people, and then go to the gym where there's more people and then go to work where there's more people that I can, you know, fuck around with. And then by the time I'm done with everything, I get home and it's like super duper late and I'm passing out. And that was my idea of just like, I I just, I like that. I loved it. But then when I got that taken away from me, um, it was like, oh my God, I lost like. I I felt like I lost like my happiness. I felt like I lost everything, but it was just like, I didn't have it. This thing taught me that I never had this. It was all outside of me. So when I had to sit at my parents' house in my, you know, (laughs) the, basically the house I grew up in and, you know, with all those thoughts, memories and, nowhere to go why did you bolt straight there again in record time never mind bolt where to your parents house why did you flee big (gasps) rapids oh all right all right for the listeners um a full disclosure i read an article on ufo (laughs) sighting dot that uh this thing is a uh, biological chemi- biochemical weapon created by the chinese uh <laughs> yeah that's 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 enough that's good <laughs> that um was you know there's no there's no saving yourself from it it just kills you instantly and there is no vaccine and everybody is going to die i thought we were all going to die yeah, like and the I, flesh just falls right off your bone like a fucking freshly cooked pork chop. Just <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I thought it was up to me to save the world and come up with a antidote. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> and on my no. drive, on my six hour drive at home, I was trying to figure out some chemists. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh man! I started pulling out all the knowledge I got from taking chemistry classes in high school and college. This is my calling. Yes. This is what I was born for. <laughs> oh my god! Where did you get yeah. that website from? UFO sightings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, you go to your you go to your mom's house, your childhood home. Yeah. So I'm I'm. I'm left with, I feel like I lost complete control of everything and I I thought I lost everything, but all that everything I never had, it was outside of me. That wasn't me. And so throughout that time, like it was, I mean, I was going through like major depression because every day it was like, what do I do? You know, I I would still like I would work from home or whatever, but it was still just like it felt so like I felt like I was caged. Like I, you know, and I I can see why somebody would blow up like that. I could see why somebody would be like, oh, this is my freedom. And I maybe felt that, but I had a different, you know, reaction. I just had, you know, just like sadness instead of anger and fear. and then I, you know, I had to realize that I'm in control of myself in my own little world. I can create my own little world instead of trying to make the world outside of me mine. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I just got chills. Um, so it, I made some progress. Can't say I'm, I, 
did, you know, that much. You did a I, lot. No, you did a lot. You, that's when you broke your cycle. So don't, you got to give yourself some credit. Yeah. You've done so much work since the beginning of this pandemic that you probably wouldn't have done without it. Yeah. And I'm very thankful for this thing. I mean, I know it's horrible to say because there's people that lost their lives, like rest in peace. Like I'm not trying to say that this is a great thing, but just like there are some good sides to it. And yeah, I I probably would have never just fully read New Earth like I did (laughs) during March. So. Yeah, I mean, and you still would have been distracted with all your other things. Right. Not had time to like feel your feelings and do your inner work that you've been doing, you know, and I mean, it just is what it is. That's not to say, oh, I'm glad this happened, but it's like, I'm glad things panned out this way. Like, you know, I never want to look and say, you know what? I'm glad, you know, I went through my 15 years of addiction because I probably caused a lot of hurt along the way, mm-hmm. but I'm glad I got to where I am because really that reality back there in my past is there no matter what so i'm at least glad it led me here so it's kind of the same thing you're saying yeah so like i don't know like i feel like i've damn near been prepared for this like because back to like the like holiday thing like i'm not faced so i don't i usually don't have a whole lot on these covid things besides like the mind processes that go behind it because i feel like that's what i can understand like in active addiction i'd have been freaking the fuck out like when 2012 came <laughs> i was like counting down the day i was convinced shit was going down yep I'm same just, like the, the world's just gonna unplug like we're just gonna black out you know let me go hug my mom tight and kiss my kids and and you know it's like i don't know i just always thought really crazy um felt a lot of feelings had a lot of dark thoughts that just kept cycling each other with this i don't like i i've gotten a pretty good harness on my thoughts but i don't know with covid like i already semi-isolate don't uh, okay i probably more than (laughs) semi-isolate yeah (laughs) i could feel it um like the last few years, like, especially in my later addiction, but even kind of some in recovery still, I've spent a lot of Christmases alone. You know, I've, um, kind of broke that mold of, you know, when I, when I couldn't spend the first few holidays with my kids, that was pain. So when it came to like not seeing regular family members, that doesn't touch the feelings I felt not seeing my kids on like their birthdays or their holidays. And after getting through something like that, I was just kind of like, so with COVID and everything, I'm like, it, it's just another day. I mean, one, I'm already prepared because I've already like kind of ripped the bandaid off. But two, I also tell myself, and this is with recovery uh, anniversaries. This is with holidays that don't turn out the way they should be because it's just another day. And the only thing different is the expectation on the day. So, like, if it's my birthday, but I'm in a regular mood or a funky mood, all of a sudden I'm in twice of a funky mood because it's my birthday. It's a special day. It should be a different day. But really, it's just a day, Mm -hmm. you know? So the only significance is what I attach to it. And really, my expectations put me lower than I really am because I'm not where I feel like I should be, if any of that makes sense. So, like, when it comes to, like, the holidays and stuff like that, I'm glad I have that um, kind of belief because with everything going on, to to be safe, to be careful and and smart about how I kind of navigate through this pandemic, I'm just going to tell myself, it's just another day, man. Like, you guys, we can get together anytime. You know, we could get together when all this is cleared up. We can get together in little bits doesn't have to be what it always was doesn't have to be a big grand slam you know get together especially at the cost of anybody's safety you know but i know not everybody thinks like that no i i also think like that but i have like way different reasons like i was ripped away from my family 
when I was like 10, it was just like my, me and my mom, who I never really considered as <laughs> family. But um, every holiday, I had to be around my stepdad's family, who like nothing against them, but it was just, and I felt like, you know, didn't know anybody. And every holiday was just like social crippling, crippling social anxiety and just feeling like, the weird one out and so now holidays to me are just another day as well because like you know I'll go see my mom and my stepdad and stuff but that's all that's the extent of my familiness <laughs> I don't right. know. but um yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too like a lot of ever since I came to Michigan a lot of my uh Holidays have been with my stepdad's family and they're awesome. Like they've always welcomed me. They've always been really cool. And and now that I've been up here for almost eight years, I know them all really well. Um, and I like to keep my uh, visits short. You know, I did when I was using because obviously I'm using and I'm awkward and I'm overthinking what everybody's thinking about me. And I just felt like an outsider. And then since I got clean, um, I don't know. I just, I don't like staying in a place longer than I'm like amped to be there, I guess. So I I like short bursts. I'd rather go do the dinner, mingle for a bit and bounce. I don't want to sit there and get to that point where I'm bored or I feel like I'm staying because I should stay because then I just get really weird internally um, because I'm not doing what I feel like I naturally want to do. Um, so I just go keep it short and sweet and I enjoy my time better. It's potent and I'm out and I don't feel awkward because if I force myself to stay in a holiday situation, especially with all the noise and all the people, I get really weird. I just, I don't know. There's not, not as much anymore, but I used to get just really awkward internally. And then I force myself to stay, but then I judge myself and I leave feeling like shit. So I'd rather just like, slide in, enjoy my time. When I'm ready to go, just fucking bounce. Um, that way I don't get triggered because that would trigger me because I'd think, okay, I'm, I'm in my head or I'm not as social as everybody else. What would make me more social? Oh, fucking Xanax would and if I smoked, you know what I mean? Like, so that's like my holidays late. The last, uh, five years have just been short and sweet to the point. Um, so that's kind of prepared so, me for shit like this too. That's why you avoid social things is because it makes you want to use at a certain point. At a certain point, yeah. Like I'm I'm way better now. Uh, so most of it is staying in my lane and and just keeping it real with myself like if I want to go somewhere I can go there all day as long as I'm engaged. Problem is <laughs> it gets kind of bored fast. And and if I get bored I get in my head. So, I, yeah, I'm trying not to like speak too definitively here because I'm different in different scenarios, different energy moods. No, all I, that. I like, feel that. But yes, when I, when I hit my wall, I, I would rather leave because otherwise I think, how do I get out of this wall? And my brain goes to drugs. You know, I'll try to do some mindfulness shit and shake out of it, but I can't make myself enjoy myself if I'm not enjoying myself. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have that much money. I just feel like it's about learning how to just enjoy yourself. Like, I, before, I guess I still do sometimes. It depends on the people. Well, like, I feel like I can keep myself engaged when I'm around people. Like. I can engage with people in a conversation. I can think I can kind of like see what they would want to, what they would want to talk about. And I, I'm not just going to force myself to talk about something I don't, but I'll just choose something that I like. And I can kind of tell that that would be something they'd like. And then usually most of the time people are really not really nice to talk to. And when I talk to people, I feel completely engaged. Like, I feel more engaged talking than, um, than like doing something physically. Well, well, that's because, okay, that's a lie. 
I'm more engaged physically, but I never like to go out and do stuff physically because I'm just lazy. <laughs> but <laughs> see, I'm I'm the opposite. Like I I can engage, like I really have to be drawn in to engage with a whole lot of talking. If we get to chit chatting or we get to a point where I need to constantly think of things to talk about, I'm just not skilled in that type of social setting. And it's not really what I want to do. So it does not fuel me or suck me in and make me present. It makes me in my head or it makes me like, I'd rather leave. (laughs) So like your definition of enjoying yourself is continuing to stay around people. When after my short burst, my idea of enjoying myself is getting the fuck out of there. When, when it's all done, like when, when it's, it's almost like, it's almost like a whole, uh, process, like a, a build up, a crescendo and, and we're done. Mine are short. They, they've never really lasted long. You know what I mean? Yours are probably longer and you're truly engulfed in it. Whereas I could probably entertain myself a little more and enjoy myself than you could on your own, you know? Yeah, I guess my thing is just, I just like to be around people. Yeah. And it's probably hard for you to understand that other people aren't like that. Like. No, it's not hard. I I understand. I just. I don't know. I guess I'm just a people person. No, no, I was like thinking the opposite. Like people that know how to be alone are really powerful and I could never accept that part of myself that I have a hard time being alone. But I don't know, talking to my sponsor, like she said that she's the same way. So that made me feel a little better. But still, like one of my goals is to learn how to be alone because see, I know why I can't be alone. I know exactly why I've pinpointed it. I've gotten it. I grabbed it by the balls. And now all I got to do is just shake it around. (laughs) And just like. (laughs) The visuals. Okay, I'm done. But um, the reason why I can't be alone is because my thing is doing. I don't know what is the best thing to do with myself. I'm either trying to come up with the most perfect thing to do. What is the most perfect thing to do for me right now? What is the best thing? Is it something productive or is it something not productive? If I choose productive, it has to be the most productive thing. What is it? Writing a book? Is it learning a dance? Is it finding new music? I don't know which one. Inventing a cure for the coronavirus. See, that would have been my go to. I was excited to go for it because that is the best thing. But now it's like, well, shit, I don't have big things like that. So what the fuck do I do? So I kind of understand you a little more because that's how I feel in a social setting when I need to come up with something to say. I have very limited topics that I actually give a shit about battle raps, (laughs) uh, deep mindfulness psychology shit or like recovery which is kind of the same thing as that when motherfuckers get to talking about sports or bullshitting or telling me about so and so and blah 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 I (laughs) could give a shit like I literally (laughs) when people talk to me about people I don't know and they're just telling me like Oh, yeah, so my son, you know, and his girlfriend got, like, a new fucking truck and blah, blah, blah. I I literally die inside. Like, I try to listen. I'm trying not to be, like, selfish. Okay. I I care so little that I am drained. I go completely blank, and my, my only focus is get out. I hate that about myself, and I try to work on that, and I practice it, and I'm better. I'm better at tolerating. I'm not good at engaging with it yet. I'm like, don't care. Here's a know? food. Here's a food for thought. <coughs> what if you were like, you know, some exciting happened to you? Like, you know, you got, you got a raise or, or, 
you know, you and your girlfriend had something you did or something. Oh, you and your, you and your girlfriend make podcasts, right? And you go and tell people in a social setting, like, hey, yeah, so I'm really excited about this. Imagine if they were thinking the same way as you were and they were like, oh, fuck, I don't care. They probably are. <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what a sad okay. life what so a sad one... sad life <laughs> <laughs> well it's one thing to be like hey this is what i do it's another thing to tell me this is what my fucking cousin and her friends do i don't <laughs> give a shit what am i hearing this story for like why are you telling me this i don't have space in my brain Oh, I probably sound so unconscious right now, but like, you do. So I bet funny. I do. Dude, I, when it comes to being social, man, I suck, dude. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Like I said, you, you see me and you think I'm social because in meetings I can be like, you know, fucking Mr. Social short bursts, little short bursts. I'm the fucking king. I got this. Oh, wow. Any you just go sit down at a table with these five people for three hours. <laughs> I, I'm the mute. I am the mute. I'm done. Like, just tap out. Let me go. Please. This is jail. I gotta go. Oh. Damn. Be like, go sit at a table with these uh, 10 strangers for 10 hours or go in your room for a week. Uh, I'm in my room. See ya. I think, see, not to like analyze you or anything, but like, the reason why you like meeting so much and try to get on some all the time is because you get that social aspect from it that you normally don't get because you're always isolating. I am not always isolating, bruh. Well, not always, but like, I don't know. I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't think that's true now only because my job's pretty social. I run groups, so I see, I see like tens of people. All week. Yeah, you know but you still but you still enjoy meetings. If somebody who wasn't social and had the job you have, but then had to go to meetings after, they would be like burnt the fuck out. But you're not. Well, sometimes you are. Sometimes I am. And it's not that I I'm not not social. Like I keep saying, like I I don't care for the chit chat. You know what I mean? I, I, I need some substance. If I cared about sports, I'd probably have a lot to say. Most guys like sports and talk about sports. Um, if we're talking about something to do with you or something I can connect with, cool. But if I'm hearing about third-party people, that like that's one of my least favorite things to hear about. Like, I don't know these people. I'm not going to remember their names. And I, I don't know if you're just talking to talk. Why are you telling me this? You know what I mean? And why do I feel like I have to sit here and listen to it? Um, I don't feel inspired to be like, oh, really? What kind of truck does he have? Or, oh, what's his girlfriend's name? Like, I, I don't know why. I'm just not equipped with that type of uh, small talk. And yeah, and then short bursts, like, like sometimes in um at work, I'll be talking with a client. We'll have our group. We'll go outside, shoot the shit for like five minutes, and we'll have like a a solid five minutes where I am extremely present. I I'm just good back and forth. And then if it stretches past that, I just like, uh, like I'm done. You know what I mean? And I just have nothing. And then it like, if they continue to keep going, I, I get to a lot of like, yep. Like I'm just, I, I literally go blank. It's kind of weird. So something I'm working on. Yeah. I don't think those issues are because you're not social. It's just because you want to constantly feel like you have something like interesting to say and you want to be, you know, pleasing to others. And when you get put into a situation when you're not, you want to get out of it. And it might be because when you were saying like, oh, I always try to have to think of the most perfect thing to do when you're alone. Yep. That's kind of how I get when I think of conversations like it's I don't perfectionism. Just sit there and think, yeah, I, or just a lack of practice too. And I don't sit there and think, oh, just randomly start talking about fucking battle raps or uh, start talking about. I, I wouldn't even know where to go. Like, yeah. like when people are like 
So yeah, my I talked to my uh, son today, and you know him and his girlfriend bought this new truck. It, it blows my mind. Like, <laughs> what makes you? No, I'm serious. I love it. How, so fucking what, funny. What What is inspiring you right now? It doesn't to, have to, to be inspiring. That. It doesn't no, have. To... Uh, no, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. I'm like, we're just sitting here having like a conversation. Sometimes people interrupt a conversation to say that, like. <laughs> I don't. Get oh yeah, it well, I probably I my probably son a got a truck. Those. That's what I'm. I, I probably have a million of those. Like, oh yeah, so yeah, I was talking to my girlfriend the other day, and uh, yeah, she got this new cat necklace that looks like a yin yang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why aren't you telling everyone this? I don't know. <laughs> I need you to tell everyone this. I don't. Because I don't think those are things to talk about, but I guess they are. <laughs> like, I should, man. I fucking got this. Like, just lower my bar. <laughs> Like, I always have to talk about fucking deep psychological meanings. Just hey, you know, my girl, my girl got a cat, some new fucking cat food, and she loves it. Like, I don't fucking know. I think she started eating her cat food. She had a little diarrhea at first, you know, but she worked it out. Oh it, so. my god! See, that's where you draw the line. You oh, do not fuck. tell people when I'm. I have uh, damn it! <laughs> I was talking about the cat. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's so funny how you have such a hard time trying to come up with a perfect thing in a social setting when I have a hard time trying to come up with the perfect thing to do when I'm alone. Because, you know, it sounds so crazy to me how you just stress about it, but it probably sounds crazy to you how much I stress about doing things like I. So if I if I choose something productive, it's like. It has to be the perfect thing. But if it's something unproductive, I will judge myself the entire fucking time thinking like, hey, you could be doing something productive. Like, I can't let right. myself watch TV. I can't let myself just chill. I can't let myself to just play games. Like, and if I'm with someone, if I'm with a person and we're doing something like together, it's fine. Like, it's completely okay to do it. And, and my mind turns off and because somebody else is doing it, it's fine. You know what I mean? Right. It's so crazy. Well, it's probably where you're like, you're, you're semi-validated. Like, well, if this person's okay with doing this, it must be okay. <gasps> oh my God. That, that is it. Oh, that just hit me. 